Hey, everybody. It's Evan Grant from the Dallas Morning News, dallasnews.com, your friendly neighborhood Rangers insider with another edition of This Week in Rangers Baseball, y'all. Coming to you from beautiful but frigid Surprise, Arizona. For the start of the first workout on Wednesday, I walked out of my lovely rental home. And I know, fancy me, we've got a rental home here. Yeah, the, the paper's paying for it. Um, I don't have multiple properties in my portfolio, per se. But walked out of the house uh, to the rental car and um, was greeted with frost on the windshield. And the day only continued um, in that manner, which we're getting to our lead, which is Everybody take a big, collective, deep breath. Exhale. Jacob deGrom missed the first workout of spring. My column off of it started with, and so it begins. And really, I believe, like, that's going to be the story here. Uh, you're going to hold your collective breath an awful lot about the starting rotation because there are a number of, injury concerns and the Rangers are also particularly here in February are going to act with caution where these guys are concerned. A couple of things to, to note here. Look, there are injury histories. Uh, this is a long, probably a little bit longer spring training than typical because of the built-ins for the WBC. There are a couple extra off days along the way. Um, third, Pretty much every team that comes to Arizona plans for some kind of delay early in camp in February. This is more of a rainy month. And the night before the Rangers' first pitchers and catchers workout, we actually had a hailstorm out here. Went to camp um, for that workout, and there were some chunks of ice. You know, you could see the frozen hail. <clears throat> I'm so sorry I get choked up about this. But you could see the frozen chunks of hail in certain places where it hadn't melted um, even after overnight. And the Rangers took some precautions with all their pitchers. They they decided that the fields were too slick uh, to do any pitchers fielding practice. And if you've read anything that I've written this winter, you know how much I think they, they are wanting to put an emphasis on some improved pitchers fielding practices. One of the mottos of the shield uh, inside the clubs or the logo inside the clubs clubhouse uh, is dominate the fundamentals. Um, the others are be a good teammate and compete with passion. And I'll get more into that as, as we go along here during spring and, and into the season. But the third thing on, on all of this, too, is let, let's face facts. You walk into this Rangers clubhouse and you look at a row of lockers right next to one another of Andrew Heaney, Nathan Yavaldi, Martin Perez, Jacob deGrom, Danny Duffy, who's here on a non-roster invite, um, John Gray, Jake Odorizzi, and Dane, Dun Dane Dunning. And you've got 1,450 major league starts and nearly 500 career wins. I don't know that the Rangers have ever had that much experience in one stretch of a clubhouse, maybe in any clubhouse since they've moved to Arizona. So my point is that these are also guys who know how to get ready. And – if, if Jacob felt a little bit of tightness during a bullpen session and the Rangers thought about the cold weather, it was 34 degrees about the time they were supposed to take the field on Wednesday. Um, if the Rangers thought about that, if the Rangers thought, listen, this is a guy that we've got a $185 million investment in. Um, I think it's completely rational for them to say, let's wait until this cold snap. Uh, breaks and it should before the end of the week on the other hand i also think it just underscores what is going to continue to be the story about this team uh well not going to continue to be the story about this team it, it it underscores what is the story about this team and what will continue to be the story about this team it's as good as it's starting pitch can take it and the starting pitching when healthy is as good as any in the american league but there are concerns about how often they'll be healthy. I look at that group of eight starters and I say, 
and and Duffy probably is is more a reliever now, but he's he's grouped with with that guy with that group of guys. I think because of his veteran status, um, you look at that group of guys and you say there's also some depth there. You can whether you think Dane Dunning is a number five starter in the big leagues or whether you think he's a potential number three starter in the big leagues. The guy at this point is a big league starter. And so if they were to have somebody go down, they have a a a a, a, a legitimate, legitimate fill-in um, capable of, of, of picking up some of the slack. You know, you, you lose a, if you were to lose a Jacob deGrom or Nathan Uvalde, um, you're losing a one or a two quality pitcher. Uh, and you're replacing that with something of a lesser pitcher, but it's not a guy who's coming to the big leagues with, well, we hope he can compete. So I, I think that's important. I think that is um, for me when I, when I talk with Rangers personnel about the starting rotation and what this rotation is a capable of, it always also comes with, I don't want to say caveat, but it comes with, Hey, the the added notion that look, there's depth there too. So it's not just about the five guys. I will say this though: the five guys who are projected to be in that starting rotation, Heaney, Yavaldi, Perez, Degrom, and Gray, those guys combined for a 26.2 percent strikeout rate last year. Obviously, Degrom and and Heaney didn't pitch a ton of innings, but my point is. The strikeout can be a real, real weapon for this Rangers starting rotation this year. Um, can get them out of a lot of jams early in games that they didn't really have the capability of getting out of in recent years. And uh, you can go down any number of big league stats, and these guys as a unit will rank elite among big league rotations when they're on the mound. Let's see what else. Oh, I did talk to Nathan Uvalde yesterday about being left off of Team USA. Yesterday, I gave this away when we were taping it. I, I talked to him on Wednesday when we were uh, about being left off Team USA. And look, he wanted to be on Team USA. Team USA wanted him to be on Team USA. He's 100% healthy. Again, he's a guy with an injury history. And you're talking about the WBC, which is kind of a non-affiliated event. And so what happens? Business gets in the way. Um, insurance, the insurance situation does not cover him for the WBC. I don't believe the Rangers insurance package and they weren't able to find, um, appropriate insurance coverage to, to do that. And so it, it leaves a frustrating situation for Nathan. Um, he wanted to be there. He wanted to pitch. He was among the first pitching commitments. Uh, MLB wanted him there would have been perfect for him to go from surprise over to uh, Phoenix, where Team USA will play the first round games. Uh, it all would have lined up well. The upshot of all this is he gets two extra weeks to work with his new rotation and continue to build chemistry there, which I think is going to be necessary. Um, this rotation, there's a, there, there's some burden put on this rotation, not just to perform, but I think to kind of lead the way a little bit. Uh, the second part of it is he was built up all winter to with the with the notion that he was going to be ready to go, you know, three to four innings when Team USA kicked off play, so he's a little bit ahead of where he'd typically be coming off of a of, off a healthy winter. So he should be he's in he's in good shape. He should be fine. But it it also goes that even with the healthy guys here, there's questions about health in certain situations. Um, first workout, which is all I've had to see so far, was. Very minimal because the, the Rangers, as I said, um, or went. Is that a word? The Rangers decided to bypass pitchers field in practice. Um, I think it's a smart move, quite frankly. I, I think there have been times uh, in Arizona when we've come back after a rainstorm and it's not raining and clubs have said, well, the fields are the, the fields may be a little bit wet, but there's no standing water or anything. Let's get our work in today. And I think that's I, I just think that's a little bit risky. Spring training is built in with plenty of time for these guys to get ready. And you don't want to put any of these big investments in harm's way. 
Uh, I did notice one thing during the first workout, just a little snippet for you. Uh, Martin Perez, who is going to pitch for Team Venezuela and is going to be in a position to go back out and pitch up to four innings when he goes uh, and leaves the club in March 5th, he was doing his bullpen session near um, near where the reporters were standing. And uh, Cole Reagans wandered over to watch that. Uh, as he was as he was working and Martin was sharp uh, I don't put a whole lot of stock into the first bullpen spread sh- 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 blah, blah, blah. as I get older I find that talking becomes harder for me uh, Martin Perez is it was it was a sharp bullpen session I don't put a lot of stock in that stuff uh, early in camp but granted since the guy is kind of ramped up and getting ready for Team USA and since he was Working with veteran catcher Sandy Leone, I, I, you know, I was paying attention and and, and watched and w- where he wanted to move and place baseballs, he did. And there was some conversation with him looking back at Reagan's and talking with Reagan's, also a left-hander. Uh, and I, I just thought it was a really good early spring example of what I think the Rangers are going to want from this veteran starting rotation, which is to spend some time with that group of young pitchers of Reagan's, Cole Wynn, Jack Leiter, Kamar Rocker, Owen White, Zach Kent, um, a really good group there uh, that the Rangers, you know, have brought in these free agents to kind of give them the ability to compete and, and accelerate their, their return back to contention. But at the same time, buy some of those young guys a little bit more time to develop. And when you have the confluence of the two of those groups in spring training, it is an opportunity to learn. And there's a lot that these guys can learn. So um, if if you're looking for good signs from the first workout of spring, I think that would be encouraging that I, I, I think the veterans get it. And I think the young guys get it. And I think that all goes to the idea of be a good teammate help your guys out and, you know, compete with passion, learn from, learn from other guys, um, be invested in if something's going on, don't just stand around lollygagging as my high school basketball youth group coach used to say, um, find something worthwhile during that time. And so that was, that was good. Uh, one bit of bad news that will come out today, uh, Avery Weems, who was going to be in this camp, a left-handed pitcher, who I think would have he, – he wasn't going to pitch in the big leagues in all likelihood this year, um, and he probably would have been a guy who might have been a candidate as a – as a um, if anything, as a multi-inning reliever. He had Tommy John surgery yesterday. He posted a picture of that uh, late last night. Uh, so he will miss the 2024 season. I don't want to belittle anybody's injury, but again – The situation here with the Rangers is they've got ample numbers of starters to cover these situations in the minor leagues. There is depth and I don't want to call it waves of talent, but that's, that's what the Rangers hope to do is kind of create these, these rolling waves of talent. And it's easy to say that. And it's easy for the team to plan on doing that. Look, the next step is executing the plan. We'll see where that goes. Um, Before we close out, you guys gave me some good feedback that you did like the best thing that I ate this week. And so right about now, you should be seeing a plate that looks like it's covered with um, delicious fried bits. Uh, Maybe some of you recognize it if you are Dallas long timers, but it is the fried shrimp platter at S&D Oyster House. One of the first places I ate in Dallas when I moved here in 1997 and still the world champion of the best fried shrimp I have ever had. I don't know how they get their fried shrimp to be as lightly battered. And I'm not a big cornmeal batter guy, so they don't use that. They they use a regular flour batter. It's all the shrimp are translucent. You can see the little pink shrimp veins in there. It's um they're beautiful actually and they're also really good somehow not dried out inside a little bit of crunch on the outside. Um, and, and, and not like eating cracker. Uh, I, I've been going to S and D for 28 years. Um, 
Kevin Sherrington and I often, when we go out for our little uh, middle-aged sports writer lunches, we we go there. Kevin has introduced me to the idea of put gumbo, well, not put gumbo, put horseradish in the gumbo. I was always more of a Louisiana hot sauce guy. Uh, I, I like I like the horseradish. I think it gives it a nice kick. So there's a little something extra for you. When I mentioned it to the waiter uh, the other day, the wait person the other day, um, she said, oh, I got to try that. So maybe maybe we'll set a trend here. Um, but if you haven't ever been to s &D, lovely cold goblets of beer, great oysters, which my wife enjoyed on our kind of our early Valentines before I left for spring training. Um, and then just the, uh, in my mind, the best fried shrimp in town, best fried shrimp I've had anywhere. So hopefully that leaves your mouth watering for a little bit of lunch or dinner at any point in time. I'll send you some pictures of anything that I find that is delicious out here. I had a good meal first, first full night in Arizona. I had a good meal last night at a place called the Gat, the Gladly, the Gladly, um, it was just a chicken breast with some chimichurri. But I, I really like the name, the Gladly. Um, I don't know if you say it that way, but I like to say it that way like I'm a dandy from, from the continent. Um, but it was really good. Anyway, until next week, everybody, when hopefully it'll be warmer and Jacob deGrom will be on the field. So long. Good video.